In this video, we're going to handle infinite map generation with difficulty for an endless runner. We're going to create level parts of varying difficulties and make it harder as the player goes along. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So this is our goal. We have our player in here, some coins and some spikes. He starts off stop, and as soon as I press space, there he goes off running. And you can see I can dodge his spikes and jump up. As soon as I grab a coin, you can see the counter increasing, and all the platforms are being instantiated. Now as I move forward, and more platforms are instantiated, they will stop being the, sm the easy ones, and they become the medium platforms and they are more difficult and grab from a different list and as I keep moving now there are hard platforms being spawned they are more difficult than that one and if I keep moving even further and there you go we now have the impossible platforms being spawned and if I die right now and there you go I'm dead now it asks me for a name so I can put a simple name and with a score of 57, and there you go, there's our nice high score table storing our score. So with this, we have a nice, simple, completed Endless Runner mini game. All right, so this is our goal, let's get to it. So here we have our starting point. We've got our character right here, a bunch of coins, spikes, and our platforms. And I can press space in order to start running, and there he goes. And as he runs, the map is being automatically generated. So as he gets to the edge, more level parts are being spawned and they are picked randomly from a selection of parts that we manually created. So we can pause and look at the scene view. And here as we move forward you will be able to see various level parts being automatically generated. So jump, jump, and as he gets to the edge, yep, there's one being instantiated, another one, and so on. Okay, great. So right now we have an infinite map generation. This is the scene that was made in the level generation video, so check the link in the description to see how we got to this point. So in here, essentially, we have infinite level generation. However, we also have everything is exactly the same. So there's no difficulty change or any differences. It just keeps going with the exact same level parts. Now we want to expand upon this and create more level parts with differing difficulty and then randomly choose one based on a certain difficulty factor. So let's get to it. All right, here in our scene view, you can see we have our six different level parts. Now let's start by making a different one. So let's just duplicate this one and let's call this the level part medium one. So this will be a part of medium difficulty. Now in here, let's leave this pretty much the same, just a simple platform and let's tint it in a different color just to make sure that it is being correctly spawned. So here it is, we just simple tint so we can easily identify it. Now let's update our prefab and let's get to the code. So over here is our level generator. We have a reference to the starting level part. We have a list for all the level parts that we can instantiate and a reference to our player. So as the player moves towards the last end position, once he gets within a certain distance, we simply spawn another level part. Okay, now in order to modify this, we're going to have multiple lists. So in here, this will be the level part easy list and level part medium list. So here in the editor we can drag our level parts and for now let's just drag this one into the easy and this one into the medium. Okay, so far so good. Now we need to figure out how we're going to define our difficulty. There are many ways we can do it. We could for example make it based on coins, so at a certain number of coins it would increase the difficulty. Or we can make it based on the number of platforms. Let's go with that one. So over here in the code, let's see where we're spawning the next level part. So here it is, the spawn level part, when the player reaches the end. And whenever we do this, let's increase a counter. So in here, a private int for the level parts spawn. And when we spawn one, we simply increase it. And in here, we are selecting our chosen level part. So in here, we can do a very simple if. So we do a if level parts spawned. If it is bigger than 10, then we want to grab it from the medium list. So 
So over here, by default, we are choosing a easy level part. And if we have spawned more than five, then we picked from the medium list. All right, let's test. Okay, here we are. Let's start running. And there you go. And there's the first one being spawned and it's an easy level part. There's the second one, the third, the fourth, the fifth. And now let's see the six since we put just bigger than and there is our medium level part. So there you go. And now they are all medium. Okay, awesome. So we have correctly selected our chosen level part based on how many we have spawned. So right now the game starts on easy and then becomes medium. So just like that, you can already see where we're going with this code. Now, instead of doing all our ifs in here on our spawn level part, let's make a function dedicated to calculating the difficulty. So this function will return the current difficulty. Now in order to identify it, let's build a very simple enum. So in here, a private enum for our difficulty. Let's have easy, medium, hard, and impossible. And down here, let's return it from our function. And here we can define our thresholds. Okay, so here we define our values and now we have our nice function returning our difficulty. So now the spawn function in here, we can just do a very simple switch. Do a switch on the get difficulty. And by default, we pick from the easy list. Okay, so now we have our cleaned up code. We select the list of level parts based on our get difficulty, and then we simply pick a random one. Now let's make the other lists. Okay, now all we need to do is fill it up. So here on the editor, So we have our four types, the easy, the medium, the hard, and the impossible. We just drag our references into our level generator. And now let's test. Okay, here we are and start running. And let's see, we put five different per difficulty. So this is the first one, this is the second one, the third, and that's the fourth one. And that's the fifth. And there you go, we start seeing our medium platforms. And as we move forward, Yep, there you go. Now we have a hard platform being spawned and afterwards, yep, there it is. There's our impossible platform being spawned. Okay, awesome. So now that we have all our logic working, it's time to build our content. However, before we do that, let's make it very easy in order to test. So let's go into our code here and let's go up and make another serialized field for a transform. And this will be the prefab for the testing platform. So this will be essentially the platform that we wish to test. So we can go here on our wake. In here, let's see if our prefab field, if it is not null, then we are using our testing platform. So we can do a simple debug.log in order to say that we are using the debug testing platform. This is very helpful for us to build our content. And now on our spawning platform, down here when we are spawning the unlevel part. If our testing platform is different from null, then we put our chosen level part as our PF testing platform. Okay, awesome. So this should let us quickly test whatever platform we need to test. So now here on the level generator, let's for example, drag the impossible reference. And now every single one should be our impossible level part. So let's see, it goes up and as he goes, yep, there you go, he's spawning that one. Okay, awesome. And we can see on the debug, there it is, there's our nice helpful message. Okay, so this will help us in order to build our content. Now let's do it.
So here we are and I have built a bunch of level parts for each difficulty level and all of them have been added to the various lists. So as you can see the easy one starts off very simple, then the medium, then the hard and then the impossible. As you can see the platforms become smaller, they get more spikes and also more coins. On the impossible they pretty much require perfect time. So let's test and try to reach the impossible level. So for starters, here we are, start running, and there you go. We start with our easy platforms, and after a while... There you go, there's our medium platform starting to spawn. And spawn more and pick various from the random list, okay. Okay, there you go, now we have the hard platforms being spawned. And now let's see if I can make it to the impossible. And just a couple more. And yep, there are the impossibles being spawned. So now these are very, very difficult. And there you go, I've lost already. Okay, awesome. So we have all our various difficulties being spawned based on how far we get. So our logic is working pretty much perfectly. Now for just one final thing, with the difficulty and our coin score working, Let's just add a very simple high score table. So over here is the high score table that was built in a previous video. Check the link in the description to see how we created this. Now let's apply this to our project. So I'm going to copy the table into my scene. Here it is, add a TDUI. Let's see the code. Here's the table code. Here we have our code for adding a high score entry. And the whole thing already supports saving and loading. So with the table here, the first thing we need to do is make sure we show it when we die. Over here we have the die function. This is what's triggered when the player hits a spike or starts falling very fast. As you can see, it shows the game over window, which shows the retry button. Now before we show, let's calculate our score. So an int for the final score. And let's say our score is based on the coin amount plus the level generator and get the level part spawn. All right, so with our final score, we go into the high score table in order to add our entry. Now in here we need the name, so for now let's just put a testing name just to make sure that this works. Okay, let's try. Okay, so here we are, and if we run straight into our spike, yep, there you go, there's our high score table. Okay, everything is working, now let's add our name. So here, let's make a quick script. Okay, so here's the very simple script. We just have a static function in order to show. It takes a score and a action in order to submit our name. And in here, we simply have an input field that we can input with our name. So here in the canvas, here's how it's set up. We simply have our name text, which has a text and an input field. And here we set the unvalidate input in order to set our character to upper. And on show, we simply select it. So let's test this out. Let's go into the player. And here, let's comment out these two. And instead, go into the high score name input window in order to show Let's show the final score, and right now let's not do anything with this. Just to test to see if it shows up. Let's do a debug.log on the name. Okay, let's see. Okay, here we are. Let's die on the first spike, and when we hit it, yep, there you go, there's our name. Now let's say A, B, C, and yep, there you go, there's on the log A, B, C. Okay, awesome. So we have pretty much everything working. Now in here, instead of doing a debug.log, we submit our name. Okay, let's try dying, and there you go, hit the spike. Okay, A, B, C. Yep, there you go, A, B, C with a score of eight. Now let's retry. 
Now let's get a bit further. So here we are, jump a couple, jump a couple. Okay, now let's fall and die, and we fall, and yep, we're dead. Now let's say test, and yep, there you go, we go up there with 14. Okay, awesome. Now try to make it as far as possible, let's see. Here are the medium platforms. Now the hard platforms. And I've made it to the impossible ones. Let's see. And yep, there you go, I'm dead. And yep, there's my high score right there on the top. Okay, awesome. So we have our very nice leaderboard. So just like that, we have created a endless runner, infinite level generation with increasing difficulty. We can easily add more level parts and more obstacles and coins to make this more varied and interesting. Then we also took the scoreboard that we created previously and added it to our project. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time.